was hot this year. <laughs> I didn't know South Florida got in the hundreds. I'm like, we were in May, and I'm like, is that 102? <laughs> really? <laughs> but we'll take what God gives us. It's uh, just another opportunity to test our faith and strengthen our faith. How's everybody doing today? It's good to see y'all. It's good to see each and every one of you. Um, so Pastor Nate is on vacation, a little time off, just for the Sunday. He'll be back next Sunday. And so here we are, us elders, us deacons, filling in the gap so that we keep the, the, the church going and going strong. Yeah. You all right? <laughs> <laughs> we try, we try, we try. Oh, my God, yesterday we had our first health and wellness class. <laughs> Wasn't it fire? Pastor, Dr. Dr. Mike, you did it yesterday. Woo. <laughs> very informative, very educational. And we, was, we thank Dr. Mike for that. I mean, you got to do it again. Because we need to hear how to, you know, nutrition, how to take care of ourselves. Because, you know, we're all human. And this body is breaking down as we age. <laughs> I feel it. Here, here. <laughs> so, so, so every, every uh, third Saturday of the month, we're going to do something um, to educate the community. Not just us, but the entire community at large. All are welcome to come so that we are, are, are not only sharing God's word here on Sundays, but we need you know, education for how to navigate this life day to day, right? I guess I'm talking to myself. Anyway, I'll be at the next class. <laughs> I'll be at the next one. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Pat, for reading um, this wonderful scripture. How many are familiar with Moses and the Israelites crossing the Red Sea? All right, all right. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to tell you what happened. Israel was in slavery to the Egyptians. And I don't want you to start thinking about what's going on in the news in Israel right now. We're talking about biblical times, different time. And they were crying out to God while they were in slavery. God, give us freedom. Give us freedom. God's chosen people, the Israelites at the time, God hears their voice. And, they, and now God has, has called Moses. Moses, right? Moses meets God at the burning bush. Y'all know the story now. I'm trying to catch you up. And God speaks to Moses and says, Moses, go let my people free. Moses is like, whoa, that's too big of a challenge. Don't you worry because I am with you. Here comes the I am's, God, I am, Yahweh. And so Moses is down there in Egypt talking to Pharaoh. Uh, Pharaoh, we need to be free. Pharaoh goes, yeah, whatever. Uh, that's not happening. So God sends a series of plagues. Y'all know the story? He sends a series of plagues to Pharaoh. We're going to talk about those in a second. And then all of a sudden, Pharaoh gives up and lets Egypt go. And now, or rather, Israel go. And now Israel is outside the confines of Egypt. And now they're on their way to their promised land. Y'all with me so far? So we're going to talk about that period when they left Egypt, but they're not yet in their promised land. Right? The context is Israel is led by Moses out of Egypt's, Egyptian slavery. They're outside the confines of Egypt and on their way to their promised land. But let me give you a little bit more background. You go back to Exodus 13 and verse 17. 
it reads, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though it was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the desert toward the Red Sea. So God is working with the people. And there was a shorter route to get to their promised land. But because the Philistines were occupying that land, God decided to take them the long way by the Red Sea. And the reason why God did this was because Israel wasn't mentally ready to go the short route. Uh Uh-huh. So what I've learned here is that when God leads his people, God leads his people his way, not necessarily our way. I hear some hmm. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. The short route would have been done in a few days. Done. We're in the promised land. But because they were not mentally ready, God has to take them the long way. And what we find when God takes them the long way is they have to spend more time with God before they get to their promised land experience. Hmm. (laughs) So now they're in the desert, but they're en route to better conditions. Sometimes God takes us in our personal journeys, in our personal lives, takes us to situations that we don't necessarily like. But we find out later that it was the best thing for us. Sometimes God's way, we don't necessarily understand God's way, but God has a method to his madness. And then while they're in this desert experience now, because they couldn't go the short route, now they're going the long route through a desert closer to the Red Sea. And if you know anything about deserts, deserts are not very comfortable or pretty places. Deserts are hot. They are, you know, there's no vegetation. It's sandy. And everything looks the same. Y'all seen the desert on television? I mean, do y'all watch the Nature Channel or anything like that? I mean, some of y'all may have gone to a desert, especially if you've been in the military. But deserts are not any place you just want to go vacation to, unless you go to Vegas, but that's a whole other story. (laughs) We're not talking about Vegas desert. We're talking about desert where there's nothing there. I looked up the definition of a desert. A desert um, is, is, is uh, an isolated section of land, land that receives no more than 10 inches of precipitation a year. The amount of evaporation in the desert often exceeds the annual rainfall. In all deserts, there, are, there is little water available for plants or organisms. Deserts are hot. Deserts are barren. And so God brings them to a desert. Hmm. Not very comfortable. Not very enjoyable. But watch what happens in Exodus 14, 11. The text says, they said to Moses, was it because there are no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you, what have you done Uh, to us by bringing us out of Egypt. Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. This is what the Egyptians, uh, the Israelites were saying. They had a voice here of doubt. It was a voice of discomfort, a voice of frustration, a voice of things are not going my way, a voice of doubt. How many know that difficulties can cause doubt? Uh, Difficulties can cause confusion. 
because during hard times, it's easy to lose focus on God. A lot of times we'll look at the things around us instead of looking at the God before us. So they were in a desert. Things weren't going their way. Um, has anybody been in a, a spiritual desert? I mean, everything's not going your way. Uh, some of us have been in financial deserts. Housing desert. Y'all heard of food desert? No grocery store in a certain area? Some of us are in a health desert. Health is not operating correctly. Job desert. Looking for that job but can't seem to find that job. Some of us are in emotional deserts. You've lost your loved one and no one seems to be loving you. Social deserts can't find the right friends, friends in and out of your life. Don't look now, either you're in a desert or you just left a desert. Have I got a witness here? I had to preach to myself. So in that desert situation, the question to ourselves is, is what's, what's the mindset? What's our mindset? How are we looking at our situation? So, so here's his Israel. They are outside of their comfort. See, in Egypt, they had houses, right? There was food in Egypt. There was all the conveniences in Egypt. They were in slavery, but they had some comfort. But they were saying, we want to be free, and then God is now giving them deliverance, and now they're going into that experience, and things aren't working out. Have I got a witness in here? And so we're finding that in this place, you have to have the right mindset, the right focus on God. Human nature dislikes change. Moses, you brought us out here to die. They're walking through the desert, but they are still moving towards their reward, towards their promised line, promised land. When I was thinking about this, I was just thinking that while you're in your desert situations, you have to participate in your deliverance. The Bible says faith without works is dead. You have to be a participant in your deliverance. Well, how do you do that? Well, y'all heard of a thing called prayer? Have I got a witness in here? Have you heard of a thing called reading God's word? Because while you're going through a situation, you have to stay prayed up and focused on God at all times. Uh, I put it to you like this. I remember when I was uh, 16, and then I grew up in Texas. And when you were 16, that was the opportunity for you to get your driver's permit. Some other states may have different ages, but in Texas, it was 16. And I'll, I'll never forget they had driver's education class after school. I was the first one to sign up because I knew I wanted to drive. I'm like, I'm not riding the school bus the rest of my life. I want to get a car and I want to drive. So I went home and signed, told my mom I'm signing up. They had to sign the permission slip and I took it back and there I am. I'm in class. I had the book. I had to read the book. I did the test and everything. And then I passed that class and, then, and now I have to go to the, to the DMV to take that test in order to get that driver's license. We had an old beat up car at home that my mom would put me in and, show, and teach me how to drive. It was one of those old uh, gremlins. Y'all don't know about gremlins. Y'all <laughs> don't know about those gremlins. She, she drove a nice car, but she said, you're not driving my car. We're going to put you in this used beat up gremlin and you're going to learn how to drive. So I got in there, and, and I had the, uh, the, the officer at the DMV. I would get behind the wheel. The officer would be in the passenger side. And then I would start to drive, follow his commands. And I had a stick shift at the time. And so when I put that thing in reverse, that car went boom, boom, all over the place. Police officer said, stop the car. Turn off the engine. Here's your F. Come back. <laughs> like, then I took my F. I'm crying. I'm crying, y'all. 
took my F, went to my mom. We got back in the, in the other car when I got home, and we practiced again. Practiced again. Practiced for a week. Went back to the DMV. This time, I had the officer in the side. I got around the block, down the street, stopped the vehicle. <laughs> you failed. Turn back around and come back. I, this is true. I am not lying. <laughs> On the third try, after practicing for two weeks, then I went back. Did it perfectly. Got an A. What's my point? What's my point? We have to participate in our deliverance. Participate in our reward. I don't drive a gremlin anymore, thank God. <laughs> I made it. We have to participate in our deliverance. And it also requires faith, right? Faith. What 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 Israel didn't have at the time, they had a lot of complaint, but they didn't have the faith. Right when Israel is on the move to freedom and to the promised land, the voices of doubt show up and they take over the faith aspect. You see, they were focused on their desert, but God was focused on their deliverance. You see the difference there? They were focused on their desert. But God is focused on their deliverance. Now, watch. Y'all remember Paul when Jesus was in the boat with the disciples? You remember that story? They went out and, and a storm came and started rocking that boat, right? And when the storm calmed down, Jesus was out there walking on the water. And, G and Peter said, bid me come to you, Lord. And so Peter got out of that boat and started walking on the water just like Jesus. Y'all remember that story? And as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus. He walked. But the moment he took his eyes off Jesus, guess what happened? He began to sink. And so we, we, we have to keep the faith to get through desert situations. You see, fear says we're going to die. But faith says we'll have a better life. Fear says we're headed for trouble. But faith said God is our deliverer. Fear says we'll never be successful, but faith says God will help us. You've got to have faith. Hebrews 11 says, well, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Faith, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Matthew 17, 20 says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move here, and it will be moved. Nothing will be impossible to you. It just takes faith. When you go through a desert situation, bring the faith. Bring the faith. Then it goes on. Israel's like, you brought us out here to die? Was there not enough graves? No more graves in Israel or, or in Egypt? And then Paul says, or rather, Moses says, do not be afraid. This is Exodus 14, 13. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord. The Egyptians you see today, will, you will never see them again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Moses responds back to the Israelites and saying, look, God is going to help you get to the promised land. Moses' words were God-powered and God-inspired. Moses is trying to encourage the Israelites, don't be afraid, just stand firm. You're never going to see your oppressor again. Just keep the faith and God is going to deliver you. It's not like God didn't have a track record with the Israelites. Israel has had an experience with God previously. You see, when they were in Egyptian bondage, God sent plagues to free the Israelites. In Exodus chapter 7, he turned the Nile River to blood. In Exodus 8, God sends a plague of frogs, then he sends gnats, and then he sends flies. God kills the Egyptian livestock in chapter 9 of Exodus. All the cattle, the camel, 
the goats were all dead. Then he sends boils and he sends hail. In chapter 10, God sends locusts and he sends darkness. And then in chapter 11, God kills the firstborn of every Egyptian family. With all these plagues, Israel was never affected. What's my point? My point is, is that God had a track record, a previous track record with Israel. And so what dawns on me is when you're going through your desert situations, don't forget what God has done for you previously. If God was able to provide for you back then, can he not do the same today? Don't forget God's track record. And so it seems like God had a little, for lack of a better term, attitude with Israel. <laughs> but listen to this. This is straight from the Bible. Exodus 14. Moses says, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today will never, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell Israel to move on. God got fed up. God says, Why are you crying to me? I have provided for you historically. You wanted freedom, I'm bringing you freedom. <laughs> um, God's telling us, don't sit there crying in your situation. God's telling you to make a move. Don't sit there gossiping. You need to make a move. Don't sit there complaining. God says, make a move. God's trying to deliver you. Okay, y'all don't like that. Y'all don't like that. Okay, let me try it this way. I'm going to try it this way. I do a lot of driving, as you can tell. And I'm on Sunrise Boulevard. And I live out in, in west, way out there, you know, way out there, right, where nothing goes on. <laughs> Dr. Mike. <laughs> and so I'm driving in the middle lane on my, on my way to church, because I'm here quite a bit, on my way to church. And all of a sudden, the, the speed limit sign says 40 miles an hour. So I'm following. But I notice that the car in front of me is getting slower and slower and slower. I'm like, why am I going 15 miles an hour in a 40-mile zone? You got some of y'all so, so, know what I'm talking about. It, it, look. <laughs> I'm trying to get to church. This car is going slower and slower. And then I'm looking through the back window, and they're sitting there on their phone. I'm driving and texting on the phone. Okay, we're not going to call no names in here. Okay. Okay. So I'm noticing they're spending more time on the phone than they are driving, so guess what I do? No, I don't honk. I just move over into the next lane and keep on driving 40 miles an hour. What's my point? Sometimes you got to move. If what's keeping you from getting to your de point of destination is keeping you from getting there, God says, move. move. You don't need to sit there and complain and honk your horn and start doing little finger motions and, <laughs> and start yelling and screaming in your car. You don't need to do that. You need to move. Yeah, amen. amen. Y'all remember that. <laughs> on, on your way back home, <laughs> you're like that car. Are you on the phone? Are you in the phone? On the phone? <laughs> So don't, don't, don't text and drive, y'all. <laughs> so God says, Israel needs to move. Move. And so watch this, y'all. The Bible reads, Exodus 14, 19, Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved in front, that was in front, and it stood behind them, coming between them and Egypt. So God had an angel that was leading Israel. And there was a cloud of fire in front of Israel, leading them to their promised land. So now they're at, 
the edge of the Red Sea. There's a mountain behind them. There's deserts behind them. And now there's a body of water. What are we going to do? When God gets ready for your miracle, he always sends provisions. So now the angel that was before them is now moved behind them. The cloud of fire that was before them is now moved behind them. And so what happens is the cloud and the angel are standing between Israel and the Egyptian army. Yes, they've been in the desert. They're getting ready to accomplish something that they've never witnessed before. And God is putting the protection behind them. When God is on the move toward, uh, toward your provisions and your destination, he'll always give you what you need when you need it. When you're in your desert experience, God has an angel protecting you. God will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Paul, in Acts chapter 5 and 19, was in prison, and the angel of the Lord came and opened the prison doors. Verse 20 of Exodus 14 says, Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side, and they brought light to the other side, so neither Egypt or Israel could see the other all night long. In this case, God brought darkness before the Egyptians so they couldn't see the Israelites. God was preparing them. Then Moses stood before them, rose his staff, and watched the Red Sea part on either side. And the Israelites walked on on dry ground. God has an has a ability to make a way out of no way. I'm going to put it to you like this. I told you I, got, I do a lot of driving, so I got a lot of driving examples. <laughs> when God is in the business or in the process of making your exodus through your desert experience or parting the Red Sea, you got to keep the right perspective. Keep the faith. Um, uh, we, you know, when we drive, we have a little mirror in on the windshield or the, the windshield. That's called the rear view mirror. And then we also have those side mirrors on the side. But we have this big window in front of us that we're supposed to be looking out. And it dawned on me the rear view mirror is smaller, smaller than the big window in front of us. And that rear view mirror is designed for us to see what's behind us. But the majority of our time isn't to be focused on that small mirror looking behind. The majority of our time should be looking forward through the larger glass that we have in front of us. And so it dawned on me that we should spend the majority of our time looking at what's through the large window, right? And not the majority of our time looking at the small window that shows us what's behind us. You see, you can't affect what's going on behind you, but you can affect what's going on ahead of you. So God is telling Israel, don't look at the enemies behind you. Don't look at the chaos of the desert. Look at the sea and the dry ground before you. Because where I'm about to take you, you'll ne you have never experienced this before. You're about to get into your destiny, your destination, your promised land. And then it dawned on me that while we're driving, there's these side mirrors. And I noticed there's a small print in those mirrors. It says objects may appear larger than they really are right? So the things that's behind us sometimes may appear larger than what they really are, but really, guess what? They're very small because they are behind us. So Israel got to their promised land by faith. It was not easy, but by faith in God, they arrived to their promised land. So what's my point today? What's my point today? My point is, is there anything too hard for God? If God can part a Red Sea, raise a dead Jesus, 
Cannot God work in your life? Cannot God make a miracle happen in your life? That's the God that we serve. Miracle making God. Amen? Would you pray with me? The God, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for your holy and divine word. We thank you for your, this biblical example of Israel and their deliverance through the Red Sea to their promised land. We thank you, Father, that we are able to see through this and find more faith in you and more, more uh, encouragement uh, in you, God. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he died on the cross, that we might have life and that life more abundantly. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're going to move into our, our communion.